started the recording. Welcome everybody. It's our lecture for Design 320. It's week eight and uh, it's Tuesday, March 9th on our Google Meet and we're going to be going over uh, project two, part one. You guys did a great job on project one. Um, <clears throat> it was just the right amount on the whole. Few people did way more work than what was asked for, but that's okay too. That's actually really cool. Um, uh, it was just a very general introduction to um, 3D conceptual visualizations and how it can drive a design. This week, it's a little bit more focused and a little bit more structured on giving you a design. Yep, so that's good. I already looked at it, May. Thank you very much. Very nice job uh, on the one that you sent in. And um, so you'll see, we're going to focus on another water-related item. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So <clears throat> let's look and see what it says for what's, what to do this week. Here it is. And you can see, let me make that a little bigger. There's a preview of this week's topic, so I'd go ahead and watch that, please. And then here's our video playlist, which has a ton of stuff in it. And that's because, see how the SketchUp one is 36 minutes long. <clears throat> and um, I probably should have broken that into two or three pieces. And so I did that with the Revit. There's, and there, I don't know why they didn't go in here in quite the right order, but there's seven parts to the tutorial, but they're all, they're almost all short. Number, number nine went on a little, or number seven went on a little long, but these are all pretty short and very to the point. And so if you want to do this in Revit, you can step right through these tutorials. And if you want to do it in SketchUp, you can step through the tutorial. And there's the uh, talking about existing and new construction. And I just expect that you've watched that. Um, here's our work to do file. It's fairly substantial because there's a lot of images to give you ideas. Now, I don't think you can see these last three. I hope not because those are solution files. Your solution looks just like mine. It's a problem. But there's the site plan. There is the existing site plan <clears throat> that is the basis for your beginning design. Okay. And so it's got some dimensions. Here's a dimension and a bearing. Here's this. For those of you who have taken Design 301, you'll recognize this. This is pretty much. Geez. Well, we'll go into that a little bit right now. But that's not uh, germane to what we're doing uh, for this. But thank you for asking that. And I will answer that as we, uh, as we work through it. If you've watched some of the videos yet, uh, it explains it in pretty, pretty close detail. But that's a good question. And it's funny that you asked that because when I first took, uh, interviewed the, for this position, they wanted me to give a demonstration lecture about bearings. And so I did roller bearings and cup bearings and thrust bearings and all these other kind of things. And they were looking for this kind of bearing which is a direction. Okay, so if, you, if you've been in Design 301 though, you've seen this and you should, you should be familiar with that and you should know what that is uh, because we use this in Design 301. If you have not been in Design 301, this will be kind of a new site for you, okay? So you've got that and you've got some pictures of my progress through it. So this one is, Pretty well done, and we're, I'm trying to show you different styles and how you might present your work for the existing site. And so it's up to you. And here's the completed site where the building has been expanded. I have parking. I have signage. They're hard to see, but there's some light bollards here. So I've done some work on this to, to move it from my existing 
to my new construction. It looks new and different. Okay. So, you know, and, and there's there's an ADA sidewalk and there's an ADA parking space and all sorts of stuff. And there it is in another style. So these are just to give you some examples. Here is some information about what a single parking stall, ADA, American with Disabilities Act, would look like. So there's some dimensions and some dimensions and some striping and where, and you don't have to be perfect. This is a concept sketch, but it's good to know. This is a good thing to just have in mind. And this is the building that exists. And so those of you who had designed 301, you'll recognize that. And there's the 36 by 24 inch pad. And there's the wall dimensions. Okay. And our goal on this project is we're going to take this building, which was on a residential site, and we're going to redo that site. We're going to ask for um, a, a new um, a, a new type. Instead of an RD1, we're going to ask for like a light commercial or something like that. So we're going to rezone that site so that it's commercial. We're going to push one of these walls out about 15 feet to give us a little bit more room. Okay, there we go. So that's what's that's what's in there for you. So I've got a lot of stuff to just to help you look and see. And of course, here's the program requirements. So what are you going to do? There is going to be a discussion board. I don't think I've posted it yet, but I will. It'll be just like the last one, okay, where you do some work, you do your existing site plan, and you present it. And here's the... Um, Here's your, your uh, project two, part one. Now, now look, remember, many of you uh, missed the directions last week, although many of you did get it right. This is for week eight. In week nine, you're supposed to put them at the back of this. So I have one complete thing instead of having to go back and forth. Okay, but this is your week eight submittal. It's part one. You'll add part two later on. Pretty standard stuff. There is some research. We're going to talk about urban runoff control. And we're going to do LID, low impact design, which is a well-established design practice. And you're going to talk about your research here. This is for your research. All about low impact design. And here you're going to put your existing site plan, the plan view of your building with dimensions, and a plan view indicating the demolition of the driveway. In other words, you're going to have to point at the driveway and say, remove the driveway. Demolition. And then you're going to show me your new construction with the commercial renovation and a plan view of the building expansion. So that would compare to this. Here's a building with dimensions and you've expanded the building. And then a plan view of the parking area and the, and the building access. Okay. So you're just creating the site this week. Next week, you will add all of the low impact design features to it. But you need to start researching that now so that next week you've you've thought about it, you've got some good ideas, you kind of kind of know where it'll go and which ones you're going to do and things like that. Okay? So this week is prepare your site plan. Give me an existing and then a new construction. And this follows the method of what you would have to do if you were taking this project to a planning agency, City of Sacramento, or the Arden Area Community, or uh, City of Folsom, something like that. You would have a set of plans that says, here's what it looks like now, and then a new set of plans that say, 
And here's what it's going to be when I'm done. And then you'll have lots of documents to show what happens in between those two things. Okay, so you're doing kind of a land planning thing here. Okay, and then next week after you've got those things, it'll be like you go, and here are the things in particular about one part of my new design. And part of my new design is urban runoff control via low impact design. And the planners would go, cool. We usually have to ask people to add that. And you're doing it right away. And that meets our Cal Green building code. And they'll think you are so awesome. So that's great. Okay. So, so there we go. There's, there's, uh, there's what you're going to do this week. And next week, you will add the details for low impact design. So I'm going to suggest um, uh, I'll go through these resources and then I'm going to suggest that you work in either SketchUp or Revit. From SketchUp and Revit, next week, if you desire, you can also use AutoCAD and or Inventor to make many of your low impact details, but not all of them. But this type of work is best done in SketchUp or Revit. So I'm going to demonstrate to you some SketchUp today, but let's look and see first what this project is about. And I've opened it up here. Okay, and this is like a land planning proposal. Okay, this is very similar to what you would write up if you were going to take this little project to a land planning agency. So you always tell a little bit about the background of it. Okay, and your background is going to be talking about low impact design. Okay. Low impact design. What is that? They are design principles that reduce the impact of urban runoff. And that means that there's been a significant rain event and it's going down your stormwater system. Now, Many parts of Sacramento do not have a stormwater system. It goes right to the sewer system. And that's even worse because your sewer systems rely on bacteria to break down the contaminants. And if they get a big slug of rainwater, it actually washes the bacteria away. And it's not the end of the world. Bacteria grows back. It's really good. But you have some times when it could be a problem. Now, uh, those of you who went to our uh, seminar, what areas do you think might have poor infrastructure where the stormwater still goes to the sewer? Anybody got a good idea? What areas of Sacramento? How could I quickly describe them? Oh, no, not at all, Land Park. Land Park is a very rich area. It's the opposite. It's the redlined areas. It's the areas where nobody would spend money. So that was a good guess. Uh, many parts of South Sac were redlined, but certainly not Land Park. Okay, so from our thing a week ago, Monday, we found out that redlining disinvested certain areas and when you're disinvested nobody spends money including your infrastructure improvements so the redlined areas if you went on to social explorer you would find that those are areas where stormwater still goes to the sewer now that's not too bad for our overall sewer system because those areas are not uh, as big and wide and large, and so the effect is not as strong as it used to be uh, on our sewage. 
Well, Jake, I'd like you to go back and look at that video. Okay. Uh, Oak Park, uh, the area around uh, Richards Boulevard where the rail yards are. Big areas out by um, uh, McClellan. Some areas around Mather. Okay, but I'd encourage you to look at the video um, to find out and then to look at the program called Social Explorer. It is really, really interesting what happens with that. And so when you do a new land proposal, your job is to reduce the impact of um, rainwater, particularly by doing one of these five core things. Because, you know, the other thing is those areas that have been redlined in general do not have uh, a lot of open space development where water can soak into the ground, which is what we would like water to do, if at all possible, instead of run down the streets and run down the parking lots and then run off to a collection point. So there's five things, five, five kind of core things that help you follow low impact design. Conserve natural areas. In other words, don't pave over everything. This one's hard to figure out. Minimize the development impact on hydrology. What that really means is um, don't regrade the site to shove all the water into one spot. Like if I take a bulldozer and grade my site so that it all runs onto my neighbor's property, that's, that's kind of like not doing low impact design. That's a heavy impact on your neighbor. So this is a funny way to say it, but you, you can get the picture. Uh, this is the one we're going to focus on the most because it's easy to do on this site. It says, don't let the water leave the site. You want to slow it down and let it soak in. Now, that doesn't mean never let it leave the site, but you want it to go off at an even rate or slowly. And we'll look at a bunch of ways that you can do that that are really called good landscaping. So those of you who are landscapers will look at that and go, well, duh, you just do that anyway. Um, but you would be amazed uh, how many places don't. So, so we want to do that. Um, do these integrated management practices throughout your site. In other words, don't rely on just one thing, one thing, one thing. Doing lots of little things helps. Okay, so you don't have to do one big construction. Okay, and, and that just kind of makes sense too. Okay, and then here's a biggie. Implement pollution prevention so that if, if you get a high amount of runoff, and it'll happen, look, um, there are years when it just rains so much, it's incredible. And there are years when it doesn't. So if you get one of those, that you're not pushing pollution all over the place. So do your best to prevent pollution. So you look at these and you go, well, well, duh. Who's not going to do that? Well, who's not going to do that is a builder who needs to make as much money as they can as quickly as they can. And maybe they don't need to, but maybe they want to. And maybe they don't really focus on the environment or they wanted to and they're running short on money. All of these things, oops, tend to cost more money. Every single one of these costs more money at the start. Most of these end up saving money 
in the long run. But you got to have that money to start. So this is cool stuff. So low impact design, lid. That's kind of that's kind of cool stuff. Okay. So our project is going to focus on this. And the way we're going to do it is by doing some of uh, doing these four things, okay, on the site. Okay. Well, actually, I take it back. So the client is doing this. They're doing a commercial renovation of a residential site. Okay. And we, as the designers, are going to focus on principle number three as we do these things. So as we do these four things that the client wants, we're going to focus on these five things. So what does the client want to do? Okay. Wants to extend the existing building by 15 feet. Wants to add parking to four to six cars. And one of which has to be American with Disabilities Act compliant. Wants to add some sort of outdoor lighting and a sign. And wants to add good access to the building from the big road at the front. All right. And you'll see this happen a lot where there's a, a, a residential neighborhood or a residence that's, that's still a residence, although a lot of buildings around it have been converted to, to businesses. And, um, you know, whoever is living there anymore doesn't want to live there anymore. They sell it and the new owner flips it to be like commercial because they can get more money when they sell it. And so this is just something that happens as part of the normal development process of turning a residential area into a light commercial area. And then there's a lot of work going on right now with big planning agencies to actually try to get this to happen, uh, but not in a planned way, so that you can get more businesses close by residences so people aren't driving so much. So you can imagine that this could become a barber shop or a physical fitness area or uh, a small restaurant or maybe just a small business. It can be any number of things. Um, I rented for a number of years um, a former residence that was turned into a light commercial place um, that was a, a computer networking uh, hub, but that company moved out and I moved in and tore everything out and put my judo mats down. <laughs> it was right in the middle of... Um, uh, right in the middle of a of a residential area, okay? And so, and now there's lots of rules when you do this. We're not going to go into those rules, um, but, but it's a cool thing. So these are your four goals to your design, okay? But we have to show what the existing site is. We have to show their residential site. And then we have to show their light commercial site. And then we have to go figure out where we can do as much number three as we can. Okay? So here's the project requirements. Document the existing site with a simple site plan. That is a very simple site plan. Got some boundaries, shows the building and where it's located, and it shows this. It would be a little bit better if it showed the size of the building pad too, and if it gave some extra information, but this is like the minimum that you should be able to show. 
So that's the first thing. And then you're going to provide a visual concept proposal for the new site. Okay, and that will include that will include a site plan and a visual. You have to put in parking, building access, signage. I've added outdoor areas. Okay, whatever that means to you. And lighting. It could be landscaping, it could be a picnic bench, it can be bicycle racks, some sort of outdoor area. And then for our lid, our low impact design, I've given you a few different types of, of methods to follow number three. Rain roof runoff barrels. These are essentially 55 gallon barrels placed around the house where your gutter drains into. Okay, and then it's got a small hole on the bottom for water to run out. because You don't want to keep it there forever. You're just trying to slow it down because you know when it rains, usually it rains hard for five or 10 minutes and your roof gets a lot of water on it. And you just want to be able to capture a lot of that water and it'll go out, but not at the rate of it all coming down at once. Okay, so rain roof runoff barrels, a swale, which is sort of like a ditch with plants, but it's got some special features, an infiltration trench, sheet flow diverters, or pervious landscaping. And you are going to add at least two of those to your building. And so your documents, you're going to end up with three plan views. This week, I'm asking you to create two of them, existing and new. And you're going to have at least three concept views, 3D views, existing site, new site, and lid design component. These come next week. Now, it could be that that gets done because you've already done that. And that gets done because you've already done that. But I'm not asking you to present these until next week, okay? Does that sound cool? All right. Wow. How about questions at this point? Looks like a pile of work, but it's not that bad. Okay, then I'll move on just a little bit. I've got some resources for you. Oh, and here's what we do in um, uh, presentation this week. You're gonna do your research and you're gonna do your two site plans. And then next week, you're going to do these. Oops, and I should put down um, your lid site plan, but I'll add that in there. Okay, so I've got some resources for you, and they're good resources. This is what you can read about urban runoff, low impact development, or low impact design. So you can read about it. And you can read and read and read and read. Um, there is so much information. And this is all EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Okay, so this is all really, really good stuff. Okay, so this is a great resource. And you can just keep going. Ooh, green infrastructure. You can keep going and going and going on this. Which, if you feel like it, is great. Here are five principles. This is where you, I found those five principles. Look, ConTech. This is from a concrete manufacturing company. 
Are you kidding me? But I but I like them. So this is cool. These are the five core principles that we talked about. Okay, and they've got this cool thing here. Technical guides for also erosion control, storm water management, biofiltration, detention and filtration, rainwater harvesting, stormwater flow control, treatment. Oh my God, a jellyfish filter. I got to check that one out. Oh. I guess it's in here, so it doesn't have a link right to it. Uh, you can turn everything else on and off. Anyway, isn't that just... I, I, are there jellyfish standards? Throughout jelly, what does that even mean? It's something you install. Jellyfish... Oh, it's a registered trademark. For some sort of membrane filtration system. That's too bad. I was hoping that it would actually be something to do with jellyfish. Okay. Um, so there's those five principles. Here's a really cool one if you want to know what a vegetated swale is. And gives you a little bit of information about it. And where you use them and how you use them. And where you put pipes and where you put stuff. I mean, it's just cool. Like, how do you get the water out of the swale? So this is like a little a cool little overflow so that it'll fill up a certain depth. So it's really kind of neat where you want as much of it coming in down below. And they don't have to be fancy. But basically, it's a ditch with certain planting mix with certain gravel, with certain pipes in it, with certain overflows, with certain slopes. Um, it's just neato. It's neat stuff. Sheet flow diverter. You're gonna, anybody got an idea what a sheet flow diverter is? Sounds pretty fancy, huh? A sheet flow diverter. Wow. Sounds like something Batman would use. Sheet flow diverter. Anybody got an idea? Yeah, but I'm a Batman fan. Okay, so you can look. Yeah, did you just look it up? Yeah. 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 And so look, it's a bump that pushes the water off. Because <laughs> you can imagine, right? Here's a street up here. And maybe there's a big rainstorm and stuff. All of the water from the street and all the water from this is going to run downhill. And I'll tell you, by the time that water gets to the bottom of the hill, it'll knock somebody's feet out from under them. And so a sheet flow diverter wants to get it off of the street. And see over here? That's called an infiltration trench. So it shoves it into an area where it's real easy for the water to soak in. And so it's just going to try to do that. And, and then it'll soak in right in this area. I don't know how big that is or whatever. And they've got piping underground. So it's a bump. There you go. It's a bump with a purpose. There, there, there it is. There's the sheet flow diverter. And then, oh, this one isn't really even so much as an infiltration trench. They just don't want to wash away all the mud. So they just have an erosion control area. So, kind of kind of cool, huh? There we go. Uh, infiltration trenches. Now, this is all for next week. 
Now this says it's an infiltration trench and you see these in parks all the time. It looks like a drain. But underground, the drain goes to a pipe with holes in it, kind of like what many of you proposed last week for your laundry to landscape. But it's big. It's not laundry to landscape, it's rainfall to landscape. And then they have overflows in case it gets too much. And, you know, they have all sorts of stuff. But, but you can design this. And you can say, you don't have to design it. You have to say, where are you going to put it? How big is it going to be? All that kind of stuff. And then permeable surfaces, it's a hard one. But you get the idea. Permeable or pervious means that water will soak into the ground. So this over here is some sort of marble or tile or stone. So of course, water is just going to run off of that. And hopefully it's going to hit this ground over here and get soaked in. That would be great. Then the runoff from all of this won't go wherever. We're off to the street. So this is a pervious area. And they have all sorts of different types of pervious landscaping stuff. Some of which is more um, useful than others. Okay? So that's your research. You're just going to write a bunch of stuff about this and how it can be applied to your site and how what you might want to do meets number three up here. Okay? Are you good with that? All right. So I'm going to, if it works, okay, so you might recognize this from my video. This is what, what I built originally. This is my existing site. And I'm going to let you watch the video. I, I pretty much did this and built it, my existing site. Okay, and so now I want to make my new construction. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of this so I don't ruin this. I'm going to go File, Save As, Project 2, and they call it New Construction. What's there at the start? is called existing, and I really spelled that wrong. And then what's there as you build is called new construction. Now, often there are intermediate steps like demolition or grading or foundation. Different jobs break it up differently, but we're just going to say, hey, this is what's there to begin with. And now I'm going to do new construction. So the first part of my new construction is to get rid of there we go. I just got rid of the driveway. I don't want it anymore. And notice how simple my building is. This is not about building design. This is about site design. And if you care to really make your building look cool, I'm all for it because you'll have other options to do more cool stuff. Oh, look at that. I didn't do a very good job uh, making that colored. You'll have an opportunity to do more work on this building if you want. But there's my building. So that was my first step is demolish. Now, I'm going to make my parking lot. 
I'm going to make my parking lot 40 foot wide plus room for ADA, which is another five or 10 feet. Well, I'm going to make mine 50 feet wide and I'm going to do it over here. So I'm going to go 50 feet, comma, and now I have to think how far I want to make it. Well, parking lot space is about 18 feet. If I do 18 plus 2 is 20, plus another 20 so people can turn around, it's 40 feet. And I'm going to want that to have some thickness. And I think that this surface here is at like six and a half feet. And, and I'd like to go right up to that. So I'm going to pull that up six and a half feet. And I really don't care. It's not really that thick. This is a visual. I'm not pouring six and a half feet feet thick but i just want a visual of this thing and remember it well you in my previous video i suggested to make these things groups whenever you can because they're a lot easier to work with and i can move that corner over to there well that's cool but now i need to kind of trench this out a little bit and and you know what i don't know exactly how i'm gonna make this but i'm gonna i'm just gonna fake it in a little bit i'm gonna draw a line from here i'm gonna go into my top view to do that And since this is not flat, it's not going to make a surface until I draw a triangle across it. And it might not even do it then. It made one of them. And there's my other one. That's a real hard surface to make. And I'm not so interested that you get it perfect. But drawing with triangles fill things in. But that, to see, my street is going up, and this is level, and this is coming out. So that's the type of thing that you would just tell your concrete person to fill it in and let them do it. And, and they would make a beautiful, beautiful job right there. And so, you know, I'm not telling somebody how to build this. There'd probably be some backfill with dirt and gravel and some forms and things like that. This is, a, this is just a visualization of what this is going to look like. Okay. Um, oh, but I... See, I already forgot one thing. So I'm going to undo a little bit. I got ahead of myself. Well, because I got ahead of myself, I'll go the other direction. I need an extra 15 feet on this wall. This wall has to come out an extra 15 feet. So let me do that. I'm going to bring this out 15 more feet. And I'm going to get rid of this little thing right here. And I'm going to bring this out 15 more feet. And I have to bring this out 15 more feet. And this out there. It looks like I've got a hole in there. Shame on me. I left a hole there. <laughs> and that happened. Oh, see, there's something not flat the way I built that. 
So I'm just going to leave it like that. If you want to hide those lines because you don't like them, you can right click on it and hide. And that way you don't see the ugly. Now, I also probably need to make my foundation so that that's not sticking out into the middle of air. And then, you know what? <laughs> that might work, but I think I'm just going to put a post right there just for fun, just because I feel like it. And this is not part of what you need to do. There's a four by four post, but I just felt like doing it. There. And I do more, you know, I haven't got all my colors right and all that kind of stuff. So let's see how I look now. For my new construction, what have I done? I've added 15 feet onto my building. And I've made a parking lot that's big enough for four cars and one space of which is ADA. And I've made my parking lot there. So I've done some of the things I need to do once you get your site built, it's not too bad. And I'm not worrying about colors and all that kind of stuff because really what I'm going to do is look at it like that or look at it in styles. Like that, maybe too heavy. Like that, and I'll just dimension it out. SketchUp is pretty cool for this type of work. I got to tell you, it's pretty, pretty, pretty neato. Okay, so what else am I supposed to do? I extended it. And, oh, outdoor lighting. Outdoor lighting and a sign. Well, outdoor lighting, I could build my own. I could definitely build my own outdoor lighting, but I'm going to go back to my default style here. So before I put in lighting, I got to figure out how I'm going to get here. How am I going to get into this? And so... I'm going to call this my primary entrance. So that means I need some sort of walkway. So here we go again. And, and this part of the design is totally up to you. But let me measure how far is it from this corner here. Seventy-three. I'll make it seventy-three feet long, and just see what happens. So here we go, and I'm going to make a six-foot wide by seventy-three. Oh, I did that wrong. Six feet wide by 73 feet. There we go. And, and I'm going to do that six and a half foot thing again. And I know my piece is not really this thick. I'm just doing that for convenience to make my visual. And I need to make it into a, into a group. And now I can move that entire group
And then, of course, this needs some sort, right? It can't, it can't really be at that slope. So let me go like here and just cut a slope. I don't know why it's giving me that extra thing. There we go. Well, I'm, oh, I'm having a hard time cutting that away for some reason, which I don't know. Now I know. So I wasn't going on the edge. Wow. Oh, it's probably because it won't take it all the way out. I'll play with that another time. We can get rid of that if we need to. I can do an intersect with edges and faces and stuff. But that gives me... Um, well, may I'm not actually interested in which is easier. They... They, if you know how to use these, they're they're both equally the same, uh, and it depends on what you're using it for. So, so that that you know, I appreciate the question. Yeah, Jake. Okay, well, I'll help you during uh, during an individual meet find that. So that'll be cool. It's over here. It's there, and I can show you where else to find it also. So if you need to, you can go up into tools, and it's somewhere around up in here too. Paint bucket, there it is. You go to tools, paint bucket, you'll find it. But yours will have that on it. Okay, so because I want to go through, and we have just a few more minutes. Um, I got access to the building. Now I want to do add outdoor lighting and a sign. So to do that, to do that, I'm going to use the warehouse because I don't want to draw a light. So I'll go to the 3D warehouse and you have to be logged in. You guys can sign in, but I'm going to put a light. Bollard and look at models. Oh, look at that. Wouldn't that look cool? Or that? Or that? All of those would look cool. Let's see how big this is. 27 megabytes. What did that person put in there? Forget it. Um, let's try this one. Oh, 59 kilobytes. Be careful with the size of what you put in there. You put in a bunch of those things. You got a huge file. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. This one looks good. Simple light bollard. It's a very simple design. And I'm just going to download it right into here. And I'm going to put them right along this edge here. And I don't know, I'm just, I don't have to do a really great spacing or anything like that. So I'll go every uh, six feet.
Well, that's kind of cool. That would give somebody light that's that's coming up to park. So so that would be nice. I might even need to put some of those along here. Not sure. You could think about that, but that's how that's how you use the warehouse. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to do an. Maybe something like this. I don't know. Out. That's kind of a cool light fixture. That, that's a cool light fixture. Maybe I'll go. Let's see how big this thing is. That's pretty small. 161 kilobytes. Kind of funny looking. There, I'll put it. I'll put it over here just for. But see, it's weird. It would kept grabbing the wrong face there. So now I have to rotate this thing. Kind of a. There it is. Now it's facing the right way. And now I have to move it. How's that looking? That's not too bad. Oh, too far. There, it says on face. There, now I got a light in there. So that's how you use the 3D warehouse. And I know I don't have I don't have a lot of stuff in here, but I just want you to do that. Now, have I done in the building, add parking, add outdoor lighting in the sign, and add excess there? That's kind of cool. And so on Thursday or tomorrow, I'll show you. Uh, tomorrow, I'll show you how to do. Um, although it's already done, I've I've done all the tutorials for you, but I'll show you how to do the new construction for Revit. Um, and then on Thursday, we'll talk about the documentation. Okay. So there we go. We got two minutes for questions. Any more good questions? All right, then I will turn off the recording.